Hi gang! In this video, we're going to talk about how to create a seamless knit repeat pattern in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to show you how to create a simple knit pattern like this. Now, whenever I create a pattern for a garment, I like to do it next to my template or next to a flat so I can keep the scale close to what I want it to be for use in the garment. Otherwise, we end up scaling down the fill when we go to use it, and it's not the most effective way to work. So we're going to make a smaller version of this type of pattern. So let's start by grabbing the line segment tool. We're going to click once on the page and I'm going to create a line that is three points and the angle is going to be 55 degrees. Click OK. And this is a very tiny, tiny line. I'm going to hit uh, D for default just to get it to show up. And now I'm going to zoom in super close so we can see what's going on here while we work with this. I want to make sure that this has no fill, so I'm going to get rid of the fill. And then I am going to open up my stroke panel. We are going to change the weight of this. Actually, we're going to leave the weight of this at one point. We're going to make sure the caps are round, the corners are round. And down here, we are going to use this profile. So we get this sort of grain of rice shape. And now we're going to take this and expand it. So we'll go Object, Expand Appearance, and now we've got a shape filled with black. And this is what we're going to work with to create our knit stitch. Let's go ahead and reflect this. So we can go to Reflect Tool, double click on it, and we're just going to reflect this vertical and select Copy. So now we've got two, and we're going to go ahead and nudge this over. Now, I want to make sure that they're really close to each other. And in this case, my one point nudge seemed to work really well, but there are times that you will need to finesse your nudge amount a little bit better. To do that, you can go to edit your preferences, control or command K on your computer, and it will open up this preferences box. And you'll notice here uh, that I have changed my keyboard increment. Yours, by default, should say one point. I have changed mine to point one point, which gives me one tenth of the nudge amount, which allows me to finesse things much better. So you might want to do that. And now if you select one of these and nudge it over, you can move it in very, very tiny increments and really get things very close. The other thing you can do if that nudge amount is too small, hold down your shift key and it will multiply the nudge amount by 10 and you'll get back to that one point nudge. So that is how you can work with this. All right, now that we've got this, we need to make some more copies of it. So I'm going to select it. I'm going to hold my Alt or Option key to make a copy, my Shift key to keep this aligned, and I'm going to move it down very slowly so that it's pretty close but not touching the one above it. And once I've got the one there with the spacing that I want, I can duplicate what I just did. Control or Command D for duplicate, and we'll just make a few of these. And this is going to be our repeat. Now, to create a repeat in Illustrator, in order for, to, for it to be seamless, it's important to create a box that has no stroke and no fill, and have that set in the layer behind the object that you're turning into your pattern, and that is going to create our seamless repeat. So let me show you what I mean. If I were to just grab this, and let's go to our swatches panel, and drag this in, we're not going to get a seamless repeat. We are going to get something a little less attractive. So we'll take this, we'll fill it, and you can see Side to side it's seamless, but we're getting this weird break here and we don't want that. So the way to avoid that is going to be this box with no stroke and no fill. Now it's a little difficult to see it because we're working so small. So instead of working in this view, I'm going to go up to view and change it to my outline view. And this is going to make it a little bit easier to see what we're doing. I'll grab the rectangle tool 
make sure that it has no fill and no stroke. And I'm going to start right at the point of this, the bottom point of this particular leaf and go down to the bottom point of the second to last leaf. Now, the reason for this is because if I started and I went all the way down to the bottom of this leaf, we would miss out on a little piece of the next leaf. And this way we get everything we need for the repeat. I've made this side touch the point of the leaf. And if you have your smart guides on, it'll kind of snap right to it. And this one, I want to be close because this is going to be the amount of space between my columns. So I don't want it to touch, but I want it to be pretty close. And now we're going to right click, arrange, and send to back to make sure that this is behind. If we go to our layers, we can take a look at this. Here are those pieces and behind it, should be this box and here it is down at the bottom so we can change our view back to the other preview and now we're going to select everything and make it into a pattern i can actually delete this top leaf we needed it for placement but we don't need it any longer so i'm going to get rid of that i'm going to select everything else open my swatches panel and drag this into my swatches and now let's go fill with it and see what we've done. We'll make a big box here and click on the fill. And now you can see we have a seamless repeat. Now this repeat is useful and it's handy to have, but I think we can do better. We are gonna do a reverse where these little stitches are actually popped out and we get the background instead. So to do that, we're gonna go back and select everything we have here, which is that box with no stroke, no fill, and our little, little knit pattern. We're gonna open up Pathfinder, which you'll find under Window, Pathfinder. And in the Pathfinder window, with this selected, we're gonna select the last one on the top row, which is called Pathfinder Exclude. And look what happens when we click on it. We get this sort of interesting reversal happening. I'm going to right click to and ungroup this. And now I can select the black areas that are sticking out and I'm going to delete them because we no longer need them. This is going to be our seamless repeat. Select it all again drag it into the swatches and now we have one that is in reverse so look what happens here if I click on it I get a reverse pattern now this works out really nicely because if I decide that I want to fill this with a color we can do it really really easily we're gonna go to the appearance panel and in the appearance panel we're gonna go down to the bottom and add and here I'll drag this up a little bit we're gonna go down to the bottom and we're gonna add a second fill which is the second icon here and it automatically opens the fill that we've already used we're gonna go to the bottom fill and we are gonna change it to whatever color we would like our sweater to be I'll make it red let's go with a nicer red and now we can see that the stitches are red and the in-between places or the shadows are black and if this feels a little bit too heavy handed to you, that's okay. We can go back to the fill layer that has this um, knit pattern, click on the opacity for that layer, and lower the opacity a bit so that there isn't quite such a strong contrast between the black and our knit color. Now, in order to use this easily without having to do this every time we want to use this pattern, we can go to our graphic styles and click new. And we now have a red knit in our graphic style to make it easy to use. So let's see how this looks in a garment. I've got a t-shirt here. And I can go ahead and select and just use my graphic style here in order to fill it. Uh, now, I probably should have added a stroke to that graphic style, so let's get my black stroke back here. But there is my 
sweater and you can see the repeat seamless pattern. I hope you found this useful. I will leave a link for my video on how to easily rotate and scale pattern fills so you can watch that next. Thanks for watching and I'd appreciate if you support my channel by leaving a like and subscribing.